So this is an extension of everything we've been doing with vector calculus. So we started off looking at Green's theorem, which related line integrals over a vector field, and um, regions in the plane that those lines bound. We pushed that up to Stokes' theorem, we, where we had a surface in three space and a line integral over the boundary of that surface. And then we, on the side, looked at something called the curl and the divergence of a vector field. And all of that is coming together to this thing called the di divergence theorem. And actually, all of these things are really special cases of some bigger theorem, which um, we're going to work towards doing after this. So let's look at the statement here. Let's say S is a piecewise smooth surface that encloses a solid, which we'll call E in R3, and it's oriented outward. And also we want to let F be a vector field with continuous partials on an open region containing E. Then we have the triple integral of the divergence of F is equal to the surface integral over S of F dot dS. So in fact, the way you can think about this is that this is a triple integral and then a special type of derivative. This derivative in this case is the divergence. Notice I've used the other notation down here, del cross f. But we can have the derivative and one of the integrals annihilate each other and we're left with a double integral. And that double integral happens to be this fancy surface integral over a vector field. Okay, great. So we want to look at a proof of this, but not a super general proof of this because that's kind of outside of the scope of a normal multivariable calculus class, like a sophomore level multivariable calculus class, which is who the intended audience of these videos is. So we'll look at a very special case of the proof, and that very special case is where this region E is just a box. So let's go ahead and look at that. So proof like I said, special case where E is equal to a rectangular box, but that means it can be the cross product of three different intervals. So we'll call those intervals x0, x1 cross y0, y1 cross z0, z1. Okay, so let's get a picture going of what's, what's happening here. So let's go ahead and draw our box. So I'll label some of my vertices, but not all of my vertices. So, okay, so this one right here is x0, y0, z0. Now this is along the x-axis, so that'll be x1, y0, z0. This is along the y-axis, so this is like x0, y1, z0. Now this up here is above the z-axis. I'm not gonna write it up here. I'm gonna go straight up here along the z-axis, which will make this x0, y1, z1. And then finally, this guy back here will be x1, y1, z1. Okay, so we've got something like that going on. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll give my vector field some component functions. So let's call these things p, q, and r. Now what I want to do is sketch up what the surface integral over, over the surface would be. And so it's going to be the surface made up of the six sides of this box, which since that's piecewise smooth, we have to do all six separately. But we're only really going to do the top and the bottom, and then it's pretty clear what's going on. So let's go ahead and look at the top, and notice that for the top, we have a really nice normal vector because since it's pointing outward, and we know that this thing is flat on the top and the bottom, we know this normal vector right here is just zero, zero, one. So that'll be our outward normal, outward pointing normal vector for the top. And then for the bottom, we have something similar. So our outward po pointing normal vector needs to point down. So that means we can take this to be zero, zero, minus one. So now let's go ahead and calculate the surface integral of the top and the bottom. So we can go uh, maybe top plus bottom of f dot ds. So that's going to be the surface integral over the top of f dot ds plus the surface integral over the bottom of f 
dot ds. Okay, so now we can go ahead and apply the definition of a surface integral over a vector field to this to rewrite both of these as this one will be f dot nt, where that's the normal vector for the top, dA, and where we're integrating over a region in the plane D, which parametrizes this top portion. But notice that's quite easy to see. That's just going to be the region in the plane uh, defined by these two intervals. So we can just call that D. And then we're going to add that to the double integral over D of F dot NB for bottom DA. Okay, fantastic. Now we can use that F is PQR and NT and NB, we know those from here and here. And that's going to give us the line, the double integral over D of PQR dotted with 0, 0, 1, and then DA plus the double integral over D of PQR dotted with 0, 0, minus 1 dA. And here that I want to point out that in this spot, we're on the plane defined by z equals z1 because we're at the top. And down here, we're on the plane defined by z equals z0 because we're on the bottom. So if we were to write our functional dependence here, we would have r depends on x and y, and those are still variables, but then we're fixed on the top plane, and so we're fixed at z1. And then furthermore, the same thing goes here. So r is going to depend on x and y. Those are still variables, but we're fixed on the bottom plane, so we're fixed at uh, z0. And I just wrote r here because notice when we do this dot product, these two zeros cancel the p and the q. And so what we end up getting is only the integral of r. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and then finish it off. Okay, so on the last board, we argued ourselves down to this point. So the surface integral over the top and the bottom of this box is given by the double integral over d, where we've described d as the first two parts of our box, of r, x, y, z1, because we're fixed on the top plane for this first one, minus r, x, y, z0, because we're fixed on the bottom. And we have a difference of signs here because we always have an outward pointing normal. So the outward pointing normal on the top gives us the positive sign and the outward pointing normal on the bottom gives us the negative sign. Okay, so now I want to put these two together. Notice we can write this as uh, the double integral over D of R evaluated at Z1 minus R evaluated at Z0 where I've suppressed the X and the Y dependence, but this still depends on X and Y. But then notice that this is exactly equal to the double integral over D, but I can replace that with a single integral, and that single integral will be from Z0 to Z1 of the partial of R with respect to Z, DZ, and then DA where what I've done here is I've used the fundamental theorem of calculus part one in other words, from calculus one to rewrite that yellow underline to that guy right there. Great, but now if we, look, if we add this interval in the z-axis to this region d, we get exactly what we're kind of working towards, which this is the triple integral over e, sorry, over, yeah, over e, because that's what we've called our box, of partial r, partial z, d, v because the dz and the da combine together to give us a dv. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we will write down the final kind of calculation. Okay, so far we showed that the surface integral of the vector field over the top part and the bottom part turns into this triple integral of dr dz where r is the third component of our vector field. Now what we can do is just look at the surface integral over the whole thing where S is the outside of this box. So notice that's going to be the surface integral over the top plus bottom 
plus the surface integral over the um, front and the back plus the surface integral over the left and the right. But for each of these, you get pretty much the same thing. And it's exactly the same calculation, just with some letters um, switched out. So for this one, you get dr, dz. For this one, you'll get partial r, partial x. And for that one, you'll get partial r. So for this one, we got partial r, partial z. For one of these, you'll get partial q, partial y. And for the other one, you'll get partial p, partial x. So this will all work down to the triple integral over e of partial p, partial x, plus partial q, partial y, plus partial r, partial z, dv. But that's exactly the definition of the divergence. So this is the triple integral over E of the divergence of F. In other words, del dot F dV. And that finishes the sketch of this proof. So we'll have some more videos where we verify the divergence theorem on some examples and also work out other examples. This is a good place to stop.